Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapsed version of a triple portrait in soft pastel. This time it's three gorgeous spaniels and I've speeded this up quite a lot just to squeeze it into a shorter video here on YouTube but I will release some full-length tutorials from this over on my Patreon channel too. So the first thing that I had to do was piece together three individual photos to come up with this composition, which would include all three dogs. It's notoriously difficult to get dogs to pose together. And my client did an excellent job of getting me really high resolution images. And as long as the lighting is uh, matching across the images, it's usually pretty easy to piece together a composition like this. The main things that you want to be the same in the photos are the lighting and also the view of the dog. So if you're looking down on one dog, you need to have that same angle, that same perspective of all the dogs in the portrait. But the photos of these three were all lovely, head on, um, perfect for cropping to head and shoulders like this. And so I make a start with Dexter, the first dog on the left, and I'm going to work my way left to right, just so that I'm not leaning on any of my finished work. So all three are really nice blue roan patterns. They've got a lot of silver gray through their dark coat. And each one is so individual. They've got their own markings, their own shape of head even differs quite a lot between the three. And certainly each one has their own character, which I really hope to capture in this portrait. The first task is to work a little bit on Dexter's eyes from some other photo references. Dexter has cataracts and it has greatly changed the shape of his eyes. So it was nice to be able to set back time just a little bit for Dexter's portrait here and return his eyes to just a few years ago. So my client supplied me with really good photo reference from a while ago where I could see Dexter's eyes really clearly. It's not always possible to make adjustments like that in a portrait. Sometimes um, a client might ask too much from you and maybe not be able to supply good enough photo reference to do what they're asking. But of course, there is a lot of editing that you can do to improve photo reference in a painting. So when you're gifted high quality photo reference, it makes life really easy. It makes it possible to make these adjustments and to really bring out every detail in the dogs. So working from good photo reference is always the key. The lighting was the same in each dog. I think the photos were taken on the same day and the dogs were all sitting in a similar direction and that's so helpful because what I'm painting here is the light and the shade. I'm really looking for the colours and the shadows. And although it's not vital that the lighting matches across a composition like this, it does make it that bit more realistic. It makes you able to believe this little scene actually happened and that the three dogs sat together. If the lighting is coming from all different directions on each of the dogs, then it's just going to be a little bit more obvious that you pieced it together. Not always a terrible thing, but I always like to try and have the lighting match across the painting. So I'm using pastel matte paper for this. It's the light brown colour of pastel matte. Good for adding a nice touch of warmth in the lower layers. Although the spaniels are lots of grey tones and lots of black, there's still quite a lot of warmth to their coats, which is why I'm bringing in browns, purples, and this blue-violet colour that I keep adding. All of that adds just a little bit more warmth than you would get with monochrome greys. 
Now, of course, you see me picking up quite a lot of pastel pencil too. The markings and the individual hairs are so fine that it's quite helpful to pick up some pastel pencil just to make those final adjustments to the fur and make it really smooth and sleek. But the majority of my pigment going onto the paper comes from my Unison Pastels. I like to get a lot of the colour down using the bigger sticks. They've got much stronger pigment, you get such strength of colour from the sticks. So especially in the base layers, I'm working from dark to light. Not worrying about the detail in the early layers, just blocking in the colours, starting to add rougher marks. And then I can come in with the pastel pencils if I need to, close to the end, and really tweak everything into shape. So this is extremely speedy, this version. I wanted to keep the video here on YouTube to a reasonable length and just give you a quick overview of this painting coming together. But I will release some full length, real time versions over on my Patreon channel, like I always do. And we'll hopefully choose some of the most useful elements of this painting and make some good tutorials to teach some of the techniques that I've used here. It was a really tricky piece, lots of curls, lots of different markings on each dog, and it took a lot of time just patiently working my way through all of the waves and curls within the fur. So I've already got some tutorials on my Patreon channel about painting curls. Um, I've actually already got some tutorials there on spaniels, if that's something that you're looking to paint. And you can visit and browse my entire tutorials library on my own website, emmacolbertart.com. Just click the tab at the top for tutorials and you'll be able to see everything that I have available on my Patreon channel without having to first sign up on Patreon. So with Muttley in the middle finished, that's Dexter on the left and Muttley in the middle, I'm finally on to Arthur, the third and final Spaniel. And Arthur is a little bit different. He's got these tan patches above the eyes and then also mixed into some other parts of the fur like around the muzzle area we've got a lot more warmth coming from orange colored hairs so that really complicates the the pattern and the markings on this dog bringing in another color but again I'm just working it one area at a time mostly. Um, I tend to work from left to right, top to bottom, just to save smudging any of the pastel under my own hand while I work. So on each dog, the top of the head and the muzzle area really took me the longest. The hair there is so fine and smooth and it's got so much reflected light on it, as well as each dog having very individual markings. So I spent a lot of time on the front of the face, on the front of the muzzle, the mouth and nose area. Those were the parts that took me the longest in this portrait for sure. but I absolutely loved working on the light and shade in each of these dogs. That strong sunlight that's heading them almost head on creates some lovely dark shadows under the chin, um, to the sides of the face, under the ears. My 
my favourite type of photo reference to work from, no matter what the subject matter, is something with nice sunlight involved. I really love painting light and shade. And that's something that I talk about a lot in my tutorials, how to approach light and shade in a painting, how to choose the colours to depict those different areas. as most of the effect will come from your colour choices. And of course that strong sunlight creates lovely, wet, reflective noses. All three spaniels have lovely sparkly noses. So I'll be asking my patrons over on Patreon what exactly they'd like to see from this piece and which parts of this giant portrait they'd like me to go into extra detail in the tutorials. So if you'd like to see those, do check out my link in the description below to my Patreon channel. Also, don't forget you can visit my website, emmacolbertart.com, just to have a browse at all of the different tutorials I have in my library. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing Dexter, Muttley and Arthur come together in time lapse. I hope you'll check out some of my other playlists here on YouTube. I've got lots of videos here for free to get you started in Soft Pastel. And I hope that I'll see some of you over on my Patreon channel too. But thanks very much for watching this here, and until next time, happy pastling. <laughs>